Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Omega JavaScript. In this episode, we will have a recap on execution context which is something which we have discussed in the previous video. We'll look into program flow, threads, the concept of this and closures. When the compiler starts scanning the code, at that very moment something called a global execution context is created and the variables and the functions whatever we have is evaluated within the context computers has stack as well as heap where they handle the memory and the execution context is something that resides within the stack when a context is created it gives us two things an object called window and a property called this which points to the window so if we switch to the browser and see the concept if we type window what we get is an object a huge object which contains a lot of properties and methods if we type this this again gives us an object which is a window object and if we do window triple equals to this it says true so this proves that the property this is pointing to the window object so these are two things that we get when a context is created especially the global execution context coming to line 3 the moment we invoke the function a new function context is created on top of the global execution context whenever a context is created it goes through two phases a creation phase and an execution phase this is discussed in depth in the previous video where i discuss about the execution context if you haven't checked that out please do so when a new function context is created here also we have two things an object and a property the difference being what we have is an arguments object and not a global window object the control flow is switched to this context the function is executed and once done the function returns and the context is destroyed and the control flow jumps back to the original global execution context talking about threads in javascript unlike other programming languages javascript is a single threaded language so assume if this is our application and there are variables and functions sprinkled over the application we have functions we have for loops so let's see how the program control flow the thread works in this case the control flow starts here it evaluates the variable that's fine it comes to the function the moment the function is invoked the control flow is switched a new context is created the logic of the function is executed here and during this time the thread is waiting here so once the function is done and returned the control flow jumps back to the thread it continues its execution it reaches the for loop and it waits here while the for loop is being evaluated once that's done the control flow jumps back to our main thread the point to note is that any code below this line has to wait till the loop is done so the program is essentially blocked from proceeding that's where we need alternate techniques for the application to proceed with its execution without blocking them as a whole since javascript is single threaded it needs to introduce different asynchronous techniques to simulate multi threading The next topic of discussion is closures. Closure is a sure shot question in every interview no matter what. The concept is tricky especially for beginners to wrap their head around, but if we can visualize what is happening, things becomes much easier. Now here is the concept. When a function returns, it usually clears out the function context. So whatever variables and logic we had within it's cleaned up so the next time we invoke a function the whole thing needs to be recreated what if we need to hold on to some of the values that the inner function was dealing with 
that's where the concept of closures come into the picture as per the definition closure is the concept of an inner function closing over the variable environment of its parent context now i understand that the whole sentence is confusing the word closing over is even more confusing for me the word closing over is the turn off so the moment i think about closing the first image that comes to my mind is something like this where the door is getting closed but i cannot sync the concept with the picture i have in mind so let's take another example where the picture would be a bit more clearer think about a situation where this is our inner function and the inner function is grabbing whatever it can or whatever it needs from the environment of the parent before returning so once the function returns it has access to whatever variable it needs from the parents environment and this concept is called closure and grabbing of variables from the parents environment is called closing over now i hope the concept is a bit more clearer now let's jump into a small example let's have a function called create coupons which accepts a parameter called course and within the function i'm constructing a message called udemy underscore whatever the course name which was passed now a function can return anything can return numbers strings booleans arrays objects or even other functions so we'll look into that scenario a bit later right now all i am doing is just consoling the value and if i invoke the method with a argument i see that there is udemy underscore angular which is the message which we have constructed the problem being if i console the message we get a reference error saying message is not defined because the variable exists only within the function's scope now let's introduce the concept of closure here so that we still have access to this message even after the function has returned so to do that let's return a function so let's have a function being returned from our original function so instead of a function returning a number or a boolean or an object or an array here i'm making the function return another function so this being a function we can have parameters to it so let's accept a parameter called discount and from within this function i'm making the function hold this value so let's have a string or a template literal which still holds on to the message variable and whatever the discount which was passed let's create something called a discount function so since this function returns another function i'm just assigning whatever the return to a variable called discount function and i'm saying const discount whatever the name is and i'm passing a discount value we have udemy underscore angular underscore 40 so even though this function has returned by line 7 when we are consoling the value at line 11 it's still holding on to the message variable through this closure so to make it even more clear let's create one more variable called discount 50 pass in another discount and let's console the value so here we can see that in line 11 as well as line 14 we are getting the full string including the message so that's how closure works by making the function remember the value it was holding on to so essentially our discount function which is a function which is returned from our create coupons function is still holding on to the variable so that this function remembers the value of it so that's how closure works and that's a simple example 
of how a closure should be. Let's see a practical interview question with respect to closures. So one of the usual interview questions for testing closures is to implement once. So the question is something like this. You need to write a function called once which should return a value only once and the second time onwards you should say this function is already invoked. So let's have a function called once and within the function let me have a property called count which I initially set to zero. Now to implement closures what should we do? We should return a function. So let's return a function and from within this function I'm saying count plus plus. So from within this function we are holding on to the count property. I'm saying if count is greater than one return sorry you already ran once. So since this is a closure and through the closure I'm having the access to the count I'm holding on to the value of the count if this was already invoked then I could say that's already ran once else let's return saying running the function for the first time to check that let's invoke the function and assign the return value to a variable let's console.log it so if we console.log that once it says running the function for the first time and if we console that again we see that sorry you already ran once so for initial invocation we have one message and for all subsequent invocations we get another message so that is a small implementation of once using closures the next interesting concept is this for me this is like a chameleon so it changes its colors based on where it's sitting the functionality of this is also something similar to that end of the day this is a keyword it refers to an object but when you ask which object the answer is it really depends so let's see an example so let's have an object called person and within the method if we use this so within a method that this refers to the object so if we use this dot name we get the output as Ben because this refers to the enclosing object so the question asked is which object does this function belong to so this print name function which object does it belong to and the answer is person so that's why we have ben as the output and one easy shortcut to remember is please look into the left of the dot so if there is something towards the left of the dot that is the this so within a method that this refers to the object and to the left of the dot we have is a person object so that's what the this is on this scenario let's have another scenario where we have a function so this is not within an object but this is a plain function so within the plain function if we console this and we invoke the function this refers to the window so within a standalone method this refers to the global object and another caveat being if you have enforced the strict mode the this refers to undefined so it's even more confusing now now let's look into another case as is so the previous example one was within an object one was within a function and this scenario is just plain outside of everything so if we use this as a standalone keyword this refers to the global object which is the window object and another case being within an event so when we are having events like clicks I'm saying 
button equal to document dot get element by id of button and i am saying button dot add event listener of click so i'm just attaching a click add event listener to this button and if we console this now this refers to the button element it doesn't refer to a window it doesn't refer to an object it refers to the button element so that's how that this changes based on where it's used so that wraps this video where we have taken a look at five different concepts let me know your thoughts in the comment section i'll see you soon in a future video thank you and bye bye